It's so nice to be here. We've got a, a little monitor problem here. I know it's you'll be able to hear out there, but I, I've got to hear this up here to keep to get it rolling. Amen. It's so nice to be here and and I appreciate the good leadership that's going uh, on here, uh, the song service. Uh, everything has just been done in so uh, orderly, in such an orderly fashion. And uh, it's good to see you all again. I, I didn't realize, I remember, I guess I remember just almost all the faces that I seen here before and uh, it's so good to 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 be back with you. I enjoyed Brother Sanders was uh, teaching this morning. Yes. The portion that I was able to I told him I said uh, I got tied up this morning in the sheets. <laughs> I, <laughs> I asked for a, a call and they didn't call till later. And so uh, I was clicking them off. Just enjoying the good morning. But this is a better morning here. Amen. And you know, Brother Walden, we miss him so very much. Good to see Sister Walden. Uh, Brother Walden is uh, doing work. He's sweating down at least twice a day. Last week every day sweating down totally. If they don't have air conditioning and uh, tabernacle out there. And uh, so it's, it, it gets hot. It's so hot out there. Um, the more the day goes on, the hotter, hotter it gets. So he's been, but they love him out there. He's been doing such a good job. For the wall, and you might miss him, but I'm going to tell you straight up, he could be gone constantly if he didn't have such a burden for this church. He, people ask him all the time to come teach. He's one of the most knowledgeable men in Pentecost today and uh, I hope you I imagine you understand that you know that Amen. people call him all over the country to get his uh, uh, knowledge of the, the scripture history somebody called me not long ago and said you suppose Brother Walter mind he called him I said well no he didn't mind it. and so well do you think he would know such and such? I said, look, if you call him and ask him about somebody that ruled in a certain kingdom in the 1400s, he'll tell you who they were, when they were, and what their brother, father-in-law's name was, and what their grandson's name was, and who they married, and what time of the day they got married. That's, just, that's how good he is. Yeah. Amen. And I, I, I tell you what, I, I just don't have that kind of a mind. I don't have that kind of memory. But I don't know. It might be a burden to have it. I don't know. <laughs> Carry all that around with you all the time. I, 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 I did good just to get out of the, out of the corn patch. Amen. <laughs> and do a little something different than what I was raised to do. Right. Amen. But anyways, thank you for the privilege of my wife and I being here. And let's just have a good church. I'll let you keep standing if you don't mind. I have to go through the commercial. I've got my books out there. you got to have a commercial break enough. Of course, you know I got the Cowboys, the Westerns out there. And Jones got her her uh, mystery, romance, mystery and intrigue. And, uh, and I know she knows a lot about romance because she flirts with every man she sees. <laughs> but anyway. 
Uh, so be it. Um, she'll ask me why I talk so much. But anyway, uh, then, but the, the books that I have out there that I push the most is Doctrine Does Matter. Doctrine Does Matter is winning people all over the United States and overseas. Never a week passes, I don't guess, that we don't have somebody tell us, I won six, eight, two, a hundred, and on and on. Every week. I had a preacher call me the other day. I was driving down the highway, and he said, Brother Marlon, I've got to have you to overnight me one of those books. And I, he said, i got a man that's, got, uh, that's dying with cancer. He don't know anything about the truth. And I want him to read the book. He'll never get up. I sent him the book. He called me eight or nine days later and said, Brother Marlon, the man's read the book. He got up. I baptized him. He got the Holy Ghost. And, I, and I, he said, I just had his funeral. I just had his funeral. Amen. I thank the Lord for it. Praise God. Praise God. So that's Doctrine Does Matter. And then I have the other religious book out there that's uh, uh, some folks I've met in the Bible. It's Bible Character Studies that is good for young and old. And then I have, I think, two or three copies of The Center of Water. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, you see them out there. But I, I kind of want to highlight uh, a few of those. And I've got those CDs, you know, those, they're strong, heavy CDs. You, you drive, I'll talk. Keep driving, I'm still talking. I'm never going to shut up. That's the three CDs. I have a new Western out there called Wagon Tracks in the Sand. And uh, I don't think Brother, I don't think Brother Walter reads my Western title. They're just not deep enough. I'm going to have to one day do different. And uh, uh, if I am, I'm going to have to hurry. And uh, I do have some of uh, Timothy Spell's CDs out there. Now, that, that guy can say. I just happen to have a few, and I'll, I'll, I'll put them out. He's, he's the best in Pentecost probably for his style uh, I would say so here we are and I'm standing between y'all and dinner you know I had a man the other day he was so ignorant he was up making an announcement and he said uh we're going to have what we used to call dinner on the ground. And finally he stopped and looked and said, where did they eat when they had dinner on the ground? <laughs> he didn't know that we ate on the car hoods and fenders. Where else would you eat? That's where you do. And I just, all of a sudden, in my mind, I visualized uh, dinner on the ground, we used to call it. You know, everybody coming in, and, and you, you watched whoever came, you know. And uh, uh, my mother was very persnickety about who she ate after, and, and that's the way we we were because she was, I'm sure. We knew who we watched where everybody set theirs down. And then old Lady Margaret would come with a cake under her arm. We knew we wasn't going to be eating that. <laughs> Let's get on with the Word of God, huh? All right. If you would turn to Exodus, the Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus, third chapter, and the first verse. I love the Waldens, they're so sweet, they're so good, they're so honest, they're so pure. 
I am going to say something that I do not say every place I go, I promise you. I suppose that they're the most Christian of all of our friends and people that I know. Come down to just being Christians. And that means an awful lot. Amen. And I appreciate his, his stand for the truth. I've seen him stand for the truth when the winds of adversity was blowing against him. He's still there when the winds pass on. Now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of what a story. What a story. Amen. You may be seated. And I'd like to speak this morning by the help of the Lord from this subject. When God sets the bush on fire. Now, Moses. Moses was nobody. Had a little rap sheet. He was nobody. And besides that, he was in the backside of the desert. Now, I don't know, that would not be a very exciting place to be all by yourself. Way back in the backside of the desert. And uh, besides that, he was tending sheep. Now that's as about as exciting as watching paint dry. <laughs> and worse than that, he was working for his father-in-law. You know the difference between outlaws and in-laws, outlaws are wanted. And so here he was, back there in the backside of the desert, tending sheep for his father-in-law. Well, there was a lot of bushes out there. You know, about the same height. God made most of the pine trees about the same height. He made most of the water oaks about the same height and pecan trees are about the same height 
he, he makes everything about, he's got it all fixed and most of the bushes no doubt were just about the same high. And, and when you've seen one bush, you've just about seen the bushes. And so here it is, he was out there and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he looked and there was the bush, one of the bush on fire. Well, it's kind of strange because he knew he hadn't set the fire. And so he watched and he just kept watching the bush. And all of a sudden he realized that the bush was not burning up. It was not being consumed. And so he realized that there was something different about this. You see, there is something different when God sets the bush on fire. Amen. 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 When God sets it, it's just different. Now the bush on fire. When God sets a church on fire, it's different. It's different than a program. You, 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 just, you just can't schedule that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That, that, that's not something that, that's not our little match that we strike. Amen. But when God, when God sets the bush on fire, it makes a Christian different. Yeah. You know, you come to church and come to church and every once in a while somebody stands up and you hear something a little different in the voice. And you feel a little something that you, you haven't been feeling. All right. You, you, you're standing in church and all of a sudden somebody maybe way back towards the back stands, lift their hands and when everybody else sits down they just keep on standing. Amen. Amen. Because God when God sets the Christian on fire praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When God sets the Christian Amen. When God sets a prayer meeting on fire, we have prayer meetings and we have prayer meetings and we go to prayer meeting because we ought to go. But then one night we walk in and everything is illuminated. Thank God. You see the glow of fire against the wall. Praise God. Thank God. And the Holy Ghost is moving because God sets a prayer. practice our music and we get ready for service and sometimes all we have is talent and that's good I, I don't want music with no talent even I, I appreciate the talent even but there's something about it when, when God sets the talent on fire praise God it's not just talent anymore it's not just the drum it's not just the piano hey God the God Praise God. Every once in a while, God sets a church on fire and it sets the preacher on fire. Praise God. Praise God. And sometimes the preacher is burning and he sets the church on fire. Oh, oh some churches get so cold you can ice skate up and down the aisle. Oh, 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 it's so much better when God sets it on fire. The Bible said John truly baptized unto repentance. 
But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to be on fire. Hallelujah. 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 
is there? He said, yeah. He said, that's where Brother Marla parked for that morning when he came. And I was sitting looking down at the window. He said, I he said, I didn't count myself a real spiritual person. And he said, but and he said, when he got out and started walking up the sidewalk, God spoke to me. He said, whatever that man wants, give it to him. And I want to tell you something. I realized that God knew my name. Praise God. And you don't know how many times through storms of life, you know how many times of hard places that, that we've been in, I can look up and say, well, God, you know my name. Praise God. You know who I am. Praise God. Don't worry. He knows who you are. He knows. As he was looking at that flame and not being consumed. Amen. The Bible says God spoke from the book. Praise God. Praise God is what makes it burn. Amen. God, not man. Amen. Not program. God is what makes it burn. That's what makes the fire go. God. That's why we live holy. That's why we live dedicated. That's why we don't see things we ought not to see and say things 
Amen. To look at God. Amen. And you know what the Lord said, Moses. Take off your shoe. Take off your shoe. Yeah. Because you're on holy. You're on holy. This is not just a mountain anymore. Amen. Praise God. This is not just a mountain anymore. Amen. You're on holy ground. Because everywhere God is, it's holy. Praise God. <laughs> some, some people. You don't know who you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, some people want to say there's no difference between a church and a warehouse. I beg to differ with you. I beg. If you are that persuasion, I beg to differ with you. Praise God. I want to tell you why. It's not. It's because, because this organ is dedicated to the Lord. The piano is dedicated to the Lord. The platform is dedicated to the Lord. The pulpit is dedicated to the preaching of the word of the Lord. The walls and the ceiling and the lights and the seats are dedicated, thank God, where people come to worship, praise God. And when we gather together, thank God, and our praise go up, that becomes the address of God. Hey God, if you want to send God a letter, you should send it right here. He'll get it just as quick here. Praise God. Hey God, because he, this is where he lives. Praise God. This is God's house. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, just I want to tell you. You say, well, I, I don't know. But you know nobody else is worshiping him. And I just felt like worshiping. I'm going to tell you, that's, that's where you missed it if you didn't. And you, you need to go in and worship the Lord. Praise God. Because I'm going to tell you something. That was on, that was Horeb. That, you know what Horeb means? It means dried up. That was a dry mountain. You set one bush on fire, you'll probably set the whole mountain on fire. Thank God. If you just, you just praise the Lord. Thank God. And it was spread like wildfire. Praise God across the auditorium. But it won't be loud. It'll be very controlled. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God. God set this place on fire. In the, in the house of God. Hey, you can't get mad in the house of God. You can't have the wrong spirit in the house of God. You can't do it if, if you want to be right. And if you don't want to offend God, you do nothing but be meek and holy and Christian and dedicated. Praise God. And as long as you do that, you have a fire. Then the Bible said, and God came down. <laughs> and God came down. Praise God. Isn't that beautiful? And God came down. <clears throat> Little boy in the Second World War was in his living room, and his father was overseas in the war. And he was looking at a picture on the wall of his father. And the, the mother walked in and he was, the little boy was staring at that picture. And he said, she said, what are you thinking, son? He said, I was just thinking, I wish that he would just step out of that picture right into this living room. Let me show you something. Let me show you another picture. Let me show you a picture of the universe. Oh, eons of time and space. Amen. The 
stars and the moon, the sun, the planets. And, and you know how it is. They keep finding new outer spaces. And they say we have found the furthest it can go. And they go build telescopes. And when they get the telescopes built, they're already obsolete because they see worlds far beyond. Far beyond. And look how he made the oceans and he made the mountains and all of that. Look, look at all of that. Amen. But you know what? One day, somewhere in the arms of glory, some day, some place, amen, God laid his crown aside, stepped out and off of the golden chair, amen, and stepped down out of the picture. Praise God. Right into the living room of our hearts. And the Bible says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld the glory of the Lord and begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came down. Hallelujah. That we might go up. Praise God. He, he, he died that we might live. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. But God sets the vision. Praise God. You see, it's According to the scripture here, this is where the Lord conceived and started the idea to put the blood on the doorpost that the children of Israel might walk out. Praise God. Amen. This is where God decided to bring the water out of the rock. Amen. For the children of Israel. This is where God decided to let one day let manna fall from heaven. Amen. This is when he actually divided the Red Sea. Praise God. To let them walk out on dry ground. Amen. This is when he decided to let the waters close back over the Egyptians with their chariots. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The day God set the bush. That's a trick. <laughs> right out of a superintendent's workbook. And uh, so we went up there. And that was the deadest, boardest, driest church I've ever known. Of. There was no um, PA system in those days, we didn't have air conditioning. I had sinuses like I do now. It was a little worse. It was hot. And nobody would say amen. 
Nobody moved a muscle. Nobody, they didn't seem like there was a lie. I didn't know how in the world who, what undertaker was putting all those people out there in our church. <laughs> and I couldn't get nothing done. And I'd go home and I'd tell my wife, I said, honey, I can't do it again. I just can't go out there again. I didn't get a new one I'm going to tell you what, church, if you, want your, if, you, if you want to have a boring preacher, uh, if you have a preacher come and, and he's dry and boring, get to backing him up. He'll oh, buy a chemist. Oh, <laughs> if you don't want to be bored to death, you get alive. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, and these people, they, they wouldn't, of course, it's your job also. You, the, the preacher don't just have the, the, the pulpit. You, you're supposed to. So I got home, I told her, I told her, I said, can't do it. I can't go back. She said, yes, you can. I said, why? She said, because it's your job. Well, I went back after I said I couldn't. I went back. It was worse. They'd been dead four days. And I screamed and hollered and did everything I could. My throat got to bleeding. And I went home. Now I had a string tied from the light bulb, the long light bulb in the room, to my bed pool. Now don't sit there and look sophisticated. You have. Some of you have. As the brother told me today, come across the track with me. Where is he at? Anyway. <laughs> and so, I got all I wanted to do was get ready for bed and fall in and I fell in that bed and I didn't care when I ever died. I hit the light straight and it went out. And I was laying there, and I've been laying there about 30 minutes. A peaceful call. And the phone rang. I got up, and I heard noise, all kind of noise. And the brother said, Brother! He said, Do you hear all that noise? I said, Yeah. He said that some folks came over after church from Shreveport to stay all night with us. And he said, I've been, I told them what you preached about tonight. And said, they're back there getting the Holy Ghost and seeking the Holy Ghost. And that's the noise. Come over and help us pray the rest of them. Then I got to hunt my britches.
with verse 7 it says, I seek, I hear, I know. Praise God. Praise God. So every time you're wondering about God, amen. Get the bush on fire. He sees, he hears. Lord, I know I wanted to do this and do that, but you are more important to me, Lord. 